it's a, it's a complicated thing, but I'm learning to live with it. Uh, the, the problem is I, I spent too much time in the public eye expressing that. So people have got their own perception of what I'm trying to do. What I'm, and that's what, that's what makes you laugh is when you watch everyone telling you what your intentions are mm. and you know they're wrong. Mm. And they expect you to feel bad, like you're a bad person. It's kind of while like some you mad, know people are wrong. It's kind of like some mad uh, public ownership, isn't it? Killer, killer, boop, 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 podcast. Killer, killer, official, dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer, killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer, killer, podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, want to be, choose to be, conform to be. Yeah, it's all part of the big, bigger Morpheus movement known as street culture. And if you want more of that street culture, go to the Keller Vision app, free download, iPhone, Android, for your street culture sports. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear from streets to stage. Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. It's the 500th episode. 500th episode. (laughs) And what better way to celebrate than with a gentleman that transcends MCing musicianship into graffiti, into all forms of rocking you understand, from hip hop and beyond, from the bootlegs you've loved to bang, <laughs> to the albums that have set precedent to a new mic order, and them some, from Burry Crew, to Mud Fam, to Task Force, we have the legend, the MC, the freestyle maestro. How are you doing? Just to be in the place. Nice to be here, man. Wow. It's been a real long time, yeah, hasn't it? it? We were literally just talking about <laughs> mm, the amount of history. <laughs> yeah, mm. scarily so, right? Yeah, like a lifetime, yeah. really. We were mm. just because you you brought up a couple of things, and I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. If, <laughs> That's what happens. Even sometimes you start having memories of the same thing, but everyone remembers it a different way. Yeah, it's true. Like, wow, that's so interesting. As I've got older, how much frequently that happens, unless I'm just completely remembering things that didn't happen, which yeah, that could may, happen to may, may be a possibility. <laughs> Those yeah. are some of the best things that ever happen as well, the ones that you yeah, think has happened. Because yeah. then things can be mistreated as well. Like, you could be in the back of a bus. And this is this actually goes back to just before recording. I, <laughs> I asked you, because this was the running word in the in the van back in ni- 98, you understand. Oh. What's it called? Mampenstone. What? It's a mampen style. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I mean, it, at times change, but we're, we're, a very close friend of ours called Anderson, who, who I, I've known, me and my brother Robin have known f- since at least 45 years or Big up, something. I maybe, maybe a bit less I remember him very well, good man. But Anderson's a good guy, and he was always on tour with us, and he, he, he was always to us like Frankenstein. <laughs> In our corner, so you know, he, he had a little wedge on him, so we called him Mampenstein. <laughs> so when he when we were saying it repeatedly in the van, it was because we were talking to him, <laughs> and you lot just thought we were saying the word <laughs> Mampenstein <laughs> for no reason. Mamps, Mampenstein, Mampenstein. We were like Mampenstein. We said yeah. that you lot must have just thought we were saying it for nothing. But Mamps was our friend Anderson, no, he, you, who's, he, who's our, uh, our, our our dearest and closest family. You know what I mean? Yeah, and he's doing well. He's so still... I mean, I, that was then. I, I wouldn't call him that now. I would like to state for the. <laughs> You know, we're all we're all pushing our fifties now. So <laughs> it's just when you're young and naive and full of full of yourself in such a way, and perhaps like hip hop culture itself is is quite aggressive in its way. Well, some of it is, you know, and some yeah. obviously not all of it. But the music I was listening to would have been, you know, quite hardcore hip hop. Um, I guess it's just a state. I guess it's the way we grow up. We grow up battling each other. So when you look at the world, you look at the world from that perspective at that point in time. Especially if you are a battle rapper, it's very hard to live your life in harmony with everything. If your if your whole mm. your whole steez is to be a battle rapper, then ultimately everything you face every day will have to be some kind of battle in your mind to keep oh, to keep you on that. You know what I mean? Mind rightly, hold on. So, okay, let's let's start here. So if you're if you've got a battle, it's kind of like a writer's mentality, isn't it? There's got to be some sort of chip going on in your shoulder, that, and you don't want to let that chip go mm-hmm. because that is the catalyst. That's to where you are at that point in time but you don't always have to be that forever like change it change it changes it, it change isn't something that happens change is a necessity change change is going to happen if we cling on to non-change then we become stagnated and we invite all kinds of 
different energies into our lives to push us into places that we ought to be getting on our own. Because if you if you if you don't pick up the phone, someone else will. It's like they say, you can't you can lead a horse to the races, but you can't make it win, right? <laughs> or, or something like that. Yo, you know, that's that's, yeah. that's that's my version of it, right? Yeah. But uh, I made that up. Right? Yeah, 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 copyright. It's, it's another copy one of those ones. You know, don't, yeah, don't steal. <laughs> yeah, don't steal. Keep it real. Keep it with the Mamp and Steins and the Scott Ferry <laughs> from a different era, but it's still his own. But you know, we did. Look, so in that point in my life if mm. I was a battle rapper for me to be able to be a battle rapper I had to be a battle rapper and mm. so the way I looked at everything would have been probably in 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 quite a competitive way with mm. everyone and everything so maybe I was a little bit horrible to people perhaps I don't know I, you know I, I don't recall myself ever being a vindictive human being but, but know, I would it, say this much though it's fun as well yeah, I mean yeah. maybe it depends how serious we take ourselves you know yeah. but ultimately I, I try it, at this point in my life I'm not a battle rapper or I'm not I'm not ignorant and I hope I'm not and I tend to treat people with sensitivity because I'm quite a sensitive human being. I like to think that I'm sensitive with other people. Mm. Obviously, it don't, it don't always go that way, you know what I mean? Mm. But I try my hardest to be calm and collected with people. Mm. There's times in life where life itself is not calm and collective for you and then you respond in an uncalm and uncollected way. Mm. You know what I mean? But that's kind of... And just going back to these, these you know, uh, words and names and use of vocabulary mm. within the battle rap world. I mean, if you take Shotty Horror, for instance... He Amazing. Is, yeah, and massively unapologetic about the way that Amazing. He, has to be. Yeah. That's what makes him win, though. And that's what makes the battle confidence. rappers... Yeah, of course. Uh, otherwise, work. it would be rubbish. Yeah. I couldn't be a battle rapper now because I'd be like, hey, man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, don't pick on me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, this is not who I am. This is not the person I am. But th th these guys doing it, uh, Tony, Tony D, obviously, yeah. for forever, that's from way back... Yeah. Fucking amazing. Yeah. The, the way they do it, the way they... There's nothing wrong with the crowd. After all, I'm not condescending on that either. All it's right. just not who I am as a human being. And I'm not very good at pretending to be like that because I, I, I'm actually a, a, a lot more delicate than that in real life. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So back then, I, I didn't care what you could say, anything. Before people used to insult me, I would have insulted myself because my self-worth has always been low. You can't say much about me that I've not already hated on. You know what I mean? <sighs> so as a battle rapper, it was like, you can't hurt me. And people knew it. And I was cocky with it, arrogant with it. And I knew I was good at freestyling. So I took advantage of that. And when people started offering money to to battle mm. I was very poor and thought wow I could actually make a living insulting people and that that was my mentality and that, that was it the angel face terror the angel face terror do you know what I mean still got the angel face yeah, I'm just a baby. slightly less terrible <laughs> <laughs> hey listen life is full of mini lives and we're going to get into a lot of these mini lives um, just to recap on the battle thing though sometimes again just going back to the chip going back to the what makes the weapon mm. of a battle MC and you know all hail up to <clears> all the progressives people are doing now mm. you know your your stake in that arena man it, it went global like with some of the battles you did have you know incredible moments in yeah. uk hip-hop history I, I i don't recall it to be an incredible moment half the time i just i just recall it as it was a moment you know what i mean because it's easy it's easy it's easy to cling on to the past with entitlement you know and it, it's much harder to let go and move forward and my it's not always been this way but my my process currently is a, a, going through all the things I've had to go through over the past decade or so with my own mental health and mm. sort of a spiritual sort of progression into finding out who I really am mm, you know like mm. beyond being a rapper you I've got chest to peers and ego Mm -hmm. That's an ego. That's a persona I invented, to so I could be this rapper character. But before him, I had Angel Face Terror, who was this battle ego. That's another persona. And when you're in the public eye, and living through these personas, it's very easy for you to forget who who's who. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, okay, like I, everyone knows me as Chester P, but behind Chester P, there's also this other character called Angel Face who's simmered down and doesn't like being that character no more. But behind that, there's also the real human being who's Joey. But even deeper behind that, there is an actual spirit inside you that has all of this as its condition in telling you that you're not that spirit. And I believe in oh. the ethereal right now, but the mind will convince you through its ego tricks that you are all of these different personas. And that 
can become very confusing for artists, and that's where I believe some of the torture in the tortured artist myth comes from, mm. is these multiple split personalities. We don't know which one of these characters to heal. Hold on, so before I can heal Joey, I've got to start, I've got to start getting rid of Chester P and understanding that Chester P is not even a real figure. That's a character I took from a book and turned into a character who people have grown to appreciate or, or not appreciate. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, like I say, there's another character who I have to dismiss and get rid of that persona. And then I get to the person who I am. I've got a name. I was given it by my parents, but I'm not that. Mm -hmm. I'm not my name. You could have called me Hillary. I'm not a Hillary either, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? The name is just a title. It's a part of the condition. Then you go through school. You go through, you know, you get all your social conditioning, your personal experiences condition you, and you turn into this ego version of yourself, all of us, mm -hmm. right? And until we can learn to accept that and reconnect with the spiritual version of ourselves we are being dictated to by our minds and that's kind of where I got to in my own spiritual progress and I've learned a lot and I understand a lot about myself but these are not things I demand other people to have faith in or believe in but it is currently how I live my life to a T and that means trying to be authentic in everything mm. I say and do and trying my hardest not to be controlled by emotional response to things, not to be triggered by things and then respond through that triggering, but to take my time and connect with my true spirit and work out what it is I'm actually here to do, which is to spread kindness and love and unity as opposed to get into this egotistic side of self-centered musicianship mm -hmm. that really wants to compete and take this and take that and I want to look good here and I, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't mind how bad I look to people. Mm -hmm. I have no interest in how I look. I have an interest in how I feel and how I make the people who resonate with me feel. So while I'm trying to move forward with love, any force that's trying to move towards me or anything I'm about opposing that, it, we're just going to have to go our separate ways and that's good for me and that's good for everyone so we can just move forward because there's a stagnated energy in general and I'm, I'm pushing forward and nothing's going to stop me. Absolutely nothing is going to stop me and my only intention is to push forward with kindness, love and respect for mm -hmm. everybody, you know, and, but mainly for myself mm -hmm. and that self-sovereignty. And because I've done the work, I've got rid of Chester P. I, I, I let Chester P go to bits on purpose. No one done that to me. Mm -hmm. I did that to myself. Mm -hmm. I took away the next guy, Angel Face Terror, took him away a long time ago. Joey worked him out, got got to the depth of my conditioning, worked out where my spirit's at. What's my spirit about? What is what is my real purpose here? Mm -hmm. What am I here? What This vessel is containing something more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I know that, and I've got Gnostic experiences of this, so I believe it fully. And I don't mind if anyone else does. I'm not asking no one to take a leap of faith, but I'm explaining here where I am at, mm. at this moment, because all them moments that have gone, not here no more. The moments that are coming, unwritten this moment this is who i am and this is what i represent so now i've done all the work i've got rid of all these bits of conditioning and it might seem i'm a little bit bizarre because certain things i associate with a very 3d state of mind pain fear suffering all of these things anger mm. these are all resolute and, and conducive of being stuck in a very 3d state of mind and I don't like to talk new age stuff or any of that, right? This is a very old thing I'm talking about. It's ancient. Uh, for me, there are, there are higher dimensions of frequency and then you can really get rid of some, a lot of this fear-based anxiety. You really can get rid of it. And that's when you start living your true potential as a human because that is when you can become in some people's terms, the magician that then controls the universe and can create the yeah. universe through the power of their mind. But in order to do that, you have to resolute with yourself authentically. And in order to do that, you have to uncondition yourself with what you believe you are and work out underneath your ego mind's version of self what is actually there. Who am I is the first line of self-inquiry. And I urge everyone to ask themselves that repeatedly Every single time they get triggered, mm. I ask people to ask themselves, well, who am I? Why am I triggering? What am I responding to? Is it an emotional response? Is it something that's trapped in my memory, in my DNA? Is this ancestral trauma, current trauma? Ooh. Is it real? Is it unreal? Mm. How am I going to respond to the world? Am I going to respond autonomously or am I going to learn to control and master my ego, master my emotions and respond to what's happening to me through my true spirit and that's my religion
That's what I stand oh, for. Wow. And all of my music that I've made up to this point doesn't reflect that properly. And I'll tell you why. Just I know I'm going on a spiel, no, no, but go, it go. sums everything go, up. Go. I'll tell you we, why. We've got the man in the fucking building. Keep it going, son. Now, my past music career hasn't ever focused on talking about this because I don't know where this lifestyle fits in with hip-hop. Mm. So I've always bring... It's not an up and down. It, that sounds condescending. I've always kept my mind state in a hip-hop state of mind when I'm making music because that's what I make, mm. hip-hop music. And I don't know how to bring this 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 spirituality belief of mine, this if, if it, it's not just Transfer mine, lots of people, how I can make the two connect. So yeah. there's been some, over the past 10 years, there's been some inauthenticity on both parts because I'm dragging mm. myself into a place here where I'm not being authentic to my spiritual beliefs because I'm trying to be authentic to my musical audience and I've got confused as to how to connect the two. Mm. But I'm finally starting to find my feet. And we talk about Dark Nights of the Soul and a, a person I'm... I, I, I'm, I'm getting acquainted to sent me a thing yesterday and he, he, he sent a thing saying, you know, it's not a dark night of your soul, it's a dark night for your ego. Your soul's coming to life. And I respond to that. Pain, trauma, suffering, if you transmute it properly, it's alchemical. You can find your gold in darkness. Yeah. All, all gold is buried in the depths of darkness yeah, yeah. and you need a treasure map to find it most of the time. So when you're in your worst places, sometimes the best thing to do is not confront it with fear and anxiety, but to allow yourself to go through it and work out where your soul is because you'll be rescued by your spirit. It will never abandon you as long as you're authentic to what that is. But finding that authenticity sometimes takes losing everything. Yeah. So when I lost everything, whether now I can speculate whether it was this reason or that reason what i'd rather do is just say i have my part in my own story i write my own story so mm. whatever he she or it did is not my business right now what i do and what i've done is what's got me where i am so it's all my fault what's happened to me if anything bad's happened to me it's because i let it or i encouraged it or i did it to myself mm. no one's ever hurt me as much as i've abused myself with drugs and alcohol no one no one ever will mm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. that, I have to fix that. No one else can. And you know, this is what's happened. Now I'm getting to a place where, all right, I can see my spiritual belief and my musical output are colliding and that's causing me to feel imposter syndrome, charlatanism. And because I'm, I'm very honest with myself and I'm able to look at myself in that way, I can say, okay, something has to give. Mm -hmm. So I've got, after the few years I've been out of, Social media, uh, people think you, you're, you've disappeared if you're not on social media. Of course, I've been alive. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been playing music, making music every day, writing music. I just haven't wanted to share it for, for, for mental health reasons. Mm -hmm. Now I'm feeling a bit better. I've got all this older stuff that I've been writing that I don't know what to do with. Mm. Because it doesn't reflect who I actually am right now. It reflects times where I've been in a lesser state of mind and, and less attached to my true nature, Got basically. You. But it's good work. So I'm, uh, what I'm planning to do is just gift it to various people, gift verses here and there, you take that, you take that, you to get it out because it is something that I want the world to have because it does reflect a true part of my journey to get in here. Mm. But I don't want to make money from it and I don't want to sell it as my own album or anything right now because it's, it's maybe an album's worth of verses. Wow. And I'm thinking, I don't want to sell, I don't, I, that, thing it's not it's not reflecting who i am authentically right now and i'll say that openly to mm. anyone and everyone but it is worth the world having it it's not horrible or anything it's just my usual sort of hip-hop but where i'm gonna go from there is a whole different thing and i i will only know where i'm gonna go when i start going but i have complete faith that my spirit guides are with me, my mm -hmm. ancestors are with me, and I'm moving in the direction that the universe wants me to. And it's going to create trigger points for some people and it's going to create goodness for some mm. other people. But that my only intention is to create goodness on all around me, everywhere I can. And if there's anything blocking that or stopping mm. that, I am always here and accountable to deal with any situation, one-on-one, -on -one, peacefully, and work out why we're not getting on. And if we can't, it, anyone, any human, if mm. that can't be done, then I'm, uh, the best thing to do is just each person Tap goes out. their own yeah. ways. And there's no problem. We're, we're, we're big people now. We need to show our youngers how to resolve conflict peacefully mm. because otherwise we're just enabling what enables warfare and any other conflict. 
You know, mm-hmm. if we can't if we can't disable our own conflict with self and others around us peacefully, how the hell are we yeah, gonna get oh, any conflict? Do you see what I mean? So yeah. we have to work on ourselves. This is Carl Jung's collective consciousness talk. You know what I mean? It's like if our own shadow is not dealt with, then what happens is that projects onto the world around us. Then the collective shadow becomes bigger, yeah, and yeah, that that's collective right. shadow enables warfare. That's it's right. that hatred that enables such atrocities as warfare. So you know. Like the, mm-hmm. for me as a human, the best thing I can do ever is to work on myself to not have inner conflict, because then I don't project that inner conflict onto no one else. And I'm not saying I've mastered that. I'm that's saying I'm trying talk. to. Real talk. And that's from my heart and soul. And I know I've fucking made so many mistakes in my life. And some people might listen to me now and think this guy's a cunt. You know, I see him do this, or I heard he did that. Or, not on this podcast, that, they won't. All, all, I'm not, I can swear or not swear. That's your podcast, uh, my brother. You uh, yeah, see, so all, all of that stuff's fine too because everyone's got their own voyage and journey yeah. and you play a role in their journey. You, your part in the next person's journey ain't got much to do with you. Mm. They, they, their narrative is what writes you into their story. Yeah, that's However right. they want you in and their and story, and, and they normally write you in. You're in and out. It's not always a, exactly. a full course. And a, a lot of times it, it, their, their whole story is projected Projected onto you and what character they need you to play in their mm. role. And not just them doing that to me. I mean, we all do this mm. to each other. When I talk about this stuff, I'm not excluding myself. Like, oh, look at me, I'm perfect little Buddha. No, I'm saying I'm, I'm aware of this shit and working on it. Like, Because I don't want to be that kind of person. Mm. I, wa- I don't want to be mechanical. I want to be free and let my spirit... Uh, actively deal with the way I progress through life. There you go. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. Mm. And give a round of applause out there because I swear to God, it's a joy to hear your your spirit guides will be absolutely championing every aspect Patting me of on the back already. Right now, and I have no doubt. I feel them. You feel them, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Uh, let me cycle back a little bit. So with regards to the initial start of what you were saying there, do you feel like you have to not immediate with a lot of people, but do you feel sometimes you have to, there's this um, having to explain yourself mm. a lot to people. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Must, that must kind of, obviously it installs it even more, your, your uh, theories and your feelings and what your beliefs are. That must be quite uh, intense it, it of a conversation. Can, it can be because sometimes, I could, uh, I've had ongoing mental struggles throughout my life and they, they really deteriorated over the past 10 to 13 years and to, 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 to an extravagant, to, to the worst place that you can go. Mm-hmm. I, you can't go into that void any further than I've already been. To be honest, the, the things that dwell in that void of darkness, they, they top their hat to me when they see me. They know me well. Me and them things are like that. So, nice. you know, yeah. me and the shadow, we know each other. I've, I've accepted it, integrated myself with it and it's okay. Like, yeah. I, I feel whole for that. But ultimately, of course, I made a lot of mistakes online because I weren't listening to the good advice of people. Even people who might not have good intentions were giving me the same advice of get, get offline. And f- for whatever intent and purpose, I mm. wasn't prepared to do that because I had this this paranoia going on in my mind that I was being set up and if I got off and it was really unpleasant like Mm. if you've ever seen the film Beautiful Mind or something like that on a very small fraction I I can relate to that quite Mm -hmm. deeply and there there have been some severe problems that I I seem to be healing and I I can just pray and keep praying to the gods that I I keep moving in that direction Mm -hmm. but you know I feel quite often that I need to explain myself on behalf of that because I'm ashamed of some of the things I did. I'm ashamed of some of the things I said. I shouted at people who I shouldn't have shouted at. You know what I mean? I, mm-hmm. I, I may have taken certain things for granted in, unintentionally because my mind wasn't thinking about what good was happening to me and the people's support. Oh, all these people are trying to help you, support you. My mind was thinking everyone's trying to hurt me. Mm-hmm. And that's not because I'm some wanker who's got no gratitude. It's because I was having a fucking mental breakdown. Yeah, and if people it. couldn't understand that, and their, 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 all their response could be to, was belittle me for that. Mm. Then I find that a little bit like, wow, you're kind of, mm. you know, if you're mm. going to, you know, I'm not even going to go into that because it makes it sound like I'm trying to turn people against people. I'm not. I accept it. I, mm. I accept I made so many mistakes. So, yeah, I feel ashamed. So sometimes I feel myself is trying to validate, actually, I was in a bad place and that isn't who I am. I'm a lot of other things, you know what I mean? And I will be in the future. Mm. So I do find I have to explain myself and sometimes I find... 
it very awkward talking about my world views because it, it may sound like I'm trying to dismiss other people's way of living and I'm never trying to do that. I'm not trying to ask anyone to think what I think. I'm trying to explain that this is what I think. And it's, it's, it, we all have the freedom to be, you know? I mean, mm. if I have to suffocate my own beliefs in fear of offending people, but I'm, nothing I'm saying is actually offensive, Yeah. then I, I find that difficult to accept. You know, I'm not offensive. It's not offensive what I'm saying. It's just my belief, you know? Yeah. If someone believes in Christ, that's their belief. It's not offensive. They, yeah. don't, they don't believe in the Quran. They believe in the Bible. But why, do, why, can't, the two, why can't people just accept mm -hmm. each other's different beliefs and say, cool? To me, God, Christ, Buddha, Allah, you name it, fucking Kali, you know, mm. Mm. it's all one energy we're talking 100%. about and all, everything Absolutely. what we are is is a focus point of awareness split this one energy has multiple focus points of awareness and we are that we are here to experience nature on behalf of this one energy right. and the more we exactly. separate ourselves from nature the more we see anxiety rule in our world yeah. because we have separation anxiety and then we have it from separating from our parents because western yeah. society teaches parenting different to some cultures in mm. the world mm. you know in some cultures parenting isn't as uh, it isn't filled with the anxiety that western parenting yeah. is because we get too attached and then we have to and it can create all kinds of problems we move from the ground which then creates depression which creates anxiety Ooh, creates we, ego we, creates we're scared everything. to be alone you yeah. see we, we, we have utter dependency yeah you know what i mean and this is the thing about conditioning and uh, you gotta be I, i'll say you know like people be, be especially if you've got some mental health issues be careful how you you know what i mean you, you sort of analyze yourself because if you if your mind's in a bad place a you can percent. you can go the wrong way with all that stuff be careful with meditation spending mm. a lot of time if, if you're having mental health issues at that moment in time do do consider that these things might not be helping mm. you know what i mean the, these are practices to do when you're in a different state of mind than depression like there are other things to do if you're depressed you know you know um i can relate with this when i turned 35 i think it was you know my my turn on the wheel of beatboxing had come to an end the gauntlet had been passed mm. and uh you know uh, no bones about it it's like i was still working but i wasn't working to my optimum mm. and I went down this space of total depression to the point I wanted to sabotage Killer Killer. And if someone said to me, don't go and get that bottle of vodka and bag of M&Ms, I'm like, I'm getting a bottle of vodka and bag of M&Ms, I'm sitting watching Bullseye, fuck you all, do you know what I mean? And I would be religiously doing it. My girlfriend at the time did not understand, mm -hmm. would not make a single bit of sense. I went and did other projects, still didn't satisfy the need. I know exactly where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. That's it, that's exactly it, what yeah. you just said. That's exactly how I felt for a long time. Yeah. Long yeah. time. It's like my fucking business. If I don't want to do Killer Killer, mm. uh, not only am I... Like, I want him to die. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the past yeah. like, eight years, I've been like, I want this guy to die. Oh. I might have even put him out in public in the worst way possible yeah, 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 just yeah, yeah, so yeah. people say, fucking kill this Hang guy. him. Hang <laughs> him. I, I don't mind. I, I yeah. Hunt the witch, man. Yeah. I am a witch, man. You mm. know what I mean? Like All witches came with the truth mm. and they all got hunted down for it. But, you know, like ultimately, I really despised Chester P for a long time. Now I identify with him again because yeah. it, it's, it, it is a self-reflection and the mirror principle is real in this stuff mm. and it, it, it was because I lost my own understanding of my own creative purpose mm. and intent you see because I got confused as to why I'm here and it's like it's especially with, with things like social media becoming so dominant mm. in the way we sell and use music it's not for me I'm a very very face on guy yeah you're you know? an approachable hands on uh, eye to eye person yeah, yeah if yeah. a person's with me and talks yeah. to me they know that I'm just trying to come off on a real thing and it's yeah. like there's no no nasty but when when people communicate via messages and stuff if a person's perception is in a bad place you, you, yeah. if you're if you're, I'm having a bad day and someone can say the nicest thing to me and I'm going to think what the fuck you say yeah. uh, you can start and this is yeah. what's happening yeah. we're we're learning through social media to communicate really unhealthy yeah, it's scary and i want to put that out there it's like if i ever do or say anything that anyone feels any kind of just approach me yeah. like it privately in the dm or whatever and just say yo man even you, voice message is easier than a fucking anything, text isn't it you anything, know yeah just man simple shit because you need you need authenticity and humanity in with those 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 words um Dude, you, as you were talking just then, it kind of got me thinking, of, <clears throat> again, you know, slightly self-absorbed but relatable to my condition at the time. And there was aspects, I suppose, that when you fulfil or go beyond your own 
dream capability, sometimes that FOMO has gone and you're still thinking to yourself, wow, did that really happen? I don't know. What, I'm off now? Is that it? We've mm. not got no more. Mm. Like, you know, 28, 29, 30, you're, you're the reality strikes, you know, mm. and maybe I walked away personally thinking to myself, what else have I got to give? Mm. I've done every single amazing thing I could possibly achieve in like a short space, at a young age, like mm. yourself, a short space of time, you know? Mm. I mean, I t- t- I've never really looked at it like that. I've because to me creativity is something that I express in everything I do. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like cookie and everything. It, it, I'm, everything I do is creative. I, I think for me, I got to a place where, like, stepping back and saying it's cool, everything has got to keep moving. Is yeah, I'm perfectly content with it. But I've lost myself in the sense that I didn't connect with what I was trying to create anymore. Mm. You know, but I weren't, I didn't have the strength of character for a long time to say that to myself and actually own it and think, well, okay, it's, 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 uh, you know, we go through phases in hip hop, we've all seen it and all probably said it, oh, hip hop's dead or this or mm. that. Or, and I've never really checked for that, you know, I mean, mm. I've, it's not necessarily dead, it's just changed and I don't like it no more, you know what I mean? It's like, there's brilliant musicians who play music that I don't like. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's nothing to do... Uh, we all have an opinion. All this are uh, the greatest of all time stuff. It's, it's, Favourite it, artists that you like that isn't uh, in your, on your radar of... of oh, no, I wouldn't like the music, but I rate their, I rate their billies. Uh, what, a musician? I, I yep. mean, John, yep. John Martin's a nice. great first person I would go to because he's so fucking talented and yeah. his music's so beautiful, but I really can't resonate yeah, with yeah, it. I get you. And that's no disrespect to him or his music. He's mm-hmm. fucking amazing, you know, but mm-hmm. it's, it's, the truth is I, I cannot listen to it, mm-hmm. right? But mm-hmm. it's not because he's not good. He's a fucking genius. It just doesn't resonate mm-hmm. with me. And that's life, mm-hmm. you know? It, there's going to be millions of people who feel the same about all of us. It's kind of <laughs> like, what, what are we, what are we course, arguing right? about? Like, of course, I don't want everyone to like me. Yeah. Why would they? It's that, that's got to be a myth. You know? Well, there's certainly got to be a, 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 an argument for and against because that's what creates the friction, of right? Of course. Or just, the, in just it, the fact that, that that just suggests that you're you're not going middle of the road because yeah. middle of the road is easy to accept. Yeah. Everyone can accept the middle of the road. Yeah. It, it, you know what I mean? It's nice, it's nice to see a bit of authenticity. You're not mm. going to be liked by everyone. I think Kurt Cobain said, I'd, you know, I'd rather be hated for who I am than love for who I'm pretending to be. And I just right. think that that's a beautiful quote, yeah. you know, and it makes a lot of sense. To me, I, 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 I've, a lot of times over the, while I was online a few years ago, a lot of, I didn't have this strength. And I was, I was adopting what people were thinking about me mm. as if it was me. And I am the kind of person where I actually do sit there and think, did I even do that? And people could tell me I did something I ain't done and I will end up feeling guilty for it. And that this is a problem I've had, oh, so it puts so me vulnerable. It's so fucking brutal, you know I mean? isn't it? It's so fucking brutal. Like, people need to... If you're no, no, I'm not saying anyone done that to me. No, I understand. I'm saying, but I, I have that but vulnerability, you, you, you know what I mean? downloading that information at a point in transition where you're recalibrating all of these new ideas, fresh ideas, approaches, getting rid of the drugs, getting rid of the alcohol, mm. and you're still trying to find mm. your way, and sure, you'll get on and have a right, you'll defend your corner. It just absolutely blows my mind that people just at that point in time weren't letting you just heal. Just That's get on all with right it. though, because you know it, it, this is the truth, right? When when you've been hurt and you've been in bad places, you can understand that the next person's got the right to be in that fucked up place too without me being overly judgmental of their shit. To me, it's like, wow, if you did that to me at that point in time, I'm going to keep my distance, but Mm. I'm not going to hate on anyone because if your own pain allows you to treat someone like that, Mm. then I empathise with the fact that you are feeling that much fucking pain. Mm, Because that you must be in a lot of pain to want to hurt someone who's who's done nothing to you and they're struggling. Your pain is is kind of the priority to me there because, to be honest, at at that time, I didn't feel like that. I was very angry, but Mm. now I, I... I'll give them a hug, man. Every yeah. one of them, you know. Yeah, what I mean, yeah, anyone, yeah. anyone. Like, if you if you carry yeah. that, like, it makes me tremble because I mean it so much. If you carry that much pain that you want to hurt other people, yeah, and then I want to give you a yeah. hug because I I carry that much love that I want to heal other people, and that 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 is literally the truth. And I know the universe is going to test me. I know it's going to trigger people to try and test me, and I'm I'm not going to fail the test. And I swear to God, mm. man, his his hugs are real. It was so good to get a hug off you today, mm. my brother. See I, that smile on your. 
face <laughs> and just be ready for the world. It's just a pleasure, an absolute pleasure it's to a see you. It's a pleasure to be spirits, here, man. you know. And it, it, it's ultimately when you said, "Ah, oh, it's your 500 thing," I thought to myself, "You know what? I don't really want to do interviews." I, I'm kind of, I'm through with needing to explain myself. Yeah, like you yeah, touched yeah. on earlier, I've come to a place where I, my validation doesn't need to be done. Mm. Like social media, I'm trying to connect with people and trying to use it in a way where I can express this sort of um, openness to mm. show love without fear of condemnation in our very masculine, toxic scene. You know, because it would be nice to open our minds up to the fact that we can be gentle. Mm. We don't have to be hard Crazy. all the time. So what, what, what changed your mind to, well, not even changed your mind, what, what, what was the decision of like, yeah, I'm coming up, because, you know what I mean, 500, you know, I was hoping just to be a bit within the 500, I'm just fucking pleased he's here. Well, man. I thought, Good I haven't spirits, seen man. you for a long time. Yeah. I've not, I, I don't watch any um, online stuff, so I've not seen the podcast itself. It's incredible. I'm sorry, <laughs> I apologise, you know what I mean? I have to be authentic, you know what I mean? All right, the that's the spirits will slap me on yeah. the back of my head. Don't you lie, boy. Don't you lie, man. You know, like, tell him the truth, I see man. you, boy. Yeah, so I have to tell But I, I just, just because I, I try my hardest not to look at anything mm. online too tough, uh, you know what I mean, at all. But what made me want to do, what made me want to come back online in general was the fact that a, a massive energy shift in my life occurred. My sobriety has taken priority. I had an epiphany with my cousin Dan. I love you so much, cousin Dan. I had an epiphany up, with Dan. him one night. Um, and, you know, uh, we're both very similar characters and have spent a lot of close times together. And mm. uh, I realised that ultimately my big problem was alcoholism and alcoholism is what stops me being able to express my creativity openly the way I, the way I meant to. How long have you been clean? Um, not long enough, man. It's yeah. it's, it's weeks. It, well, it's, it's over a month, but it's oh, weeks. Fantastic. You know I mean? Listen, every I, I, I've single off hour. And on, I've done off and yeah. on, but this time, that I'm done. I am yeah. done. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm through with it now. I understand nice. that. But fantastic. you know what's really happened is I I, I had this epiphany that look ah. Oh, wow, I know who I am. And it literally just woke up and I weren't Chester no more, I weren't Angel Face, I weren't Joey. I was, ah, I know who I am. And the ethereal life came straight to me and it just clicked. And from there I was getting light codes, downloads, and this is a real thing, man. Mm. And I experienced it, you know what I mean? And I've taken that and now I've said to myself, right, I, I feel brave enough to come out in public because I've been ashamed. Mm. I've, I'm not just ashamed, I've been angry. I haven't trusted myself and I'm trying my hardest to put my life back together slowly and if I ever seem a little sporadic or, 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 or erratic just bear with me people mm. and like I say if I do anything that seems offensive to any human being please just tell me but other than that I decided to come back online try and reclaim my humanity first then try and reclaim my creativity not from anyone else mm. from my own negligence yeah you're just ready mm. you're just and ready. i just think it's time now for me yeah. to enter the world as this person and try and and, and push forward uh, but the reason i came on the show is because you asked me <laughs> and and it's your 500 of it's my, my guy and he's here fucking yeah let's go i thought let's do it and let me just say for, you know i'm not i'm not likely to come back and do any more interviews you know this is yeah that was actually time. quite a poignant uh, statement you made you you your words were like, well, in text form they were uh, you aren't going to be doing anymore no not 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 for any sort of like uh uh, um, like uh, sensationalist reasons, is, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, but someone like Bob Dylan, I, I have a lot of uh, respect for musically, you know, oh, like, man, it, it's such Big a talented human being. And some people might hate his voice and stuff, but uh, yeah, I think he's fucking amazing. Incredible. Um, he's wrote so many good, good, good songs, changed mm. the world. You know, he performed at the Million Man March with mm. flipping Martin Luther King talking there. You know, he was invited there to sing Times and Changing and stuff. A fucking am amazing human yeah. being. Absolutely. Anyway, you know, like he, he stopped talking to the press early, early, early in his career because he, f he found the whole thing quite... Facade. Yeah, you know what I mean? But it, obviously he's a different status to anything we're talking about. For me, it's because I'm not always in the greatest state of mind and sometimes I can find myself in situations where I'm... I'm I'm not saying what really represents me because mental health issues are real. You know what I mean. And I, uh, among the different things that can happen to me, I can trigger and go back to places of my childhood and and mm. start start projecting that feeling onto the world around me mm. and become very very fucking paranoid. 
things are trying to hurt you, things are... It's a, it's a complicated thing, but I'm learning to live with it. Uh, the, the problem is I, I spent too much time in the public eye expressing that, so people have got their own perception of what I'm trying to do. What I'm, and that's what, that's what makes you laugh, is when you watch everyone telling you what your intentions are mm. and you know they're wrong. Mm. And they expect you to feel bad, like you're a bad person, it's kind of while like some you mad, know people are wrong. It's kind of like some mad... Uh, public ownership, isn't it? I, I feel like, you know, on a deep spiritual level, I feel like we can all be conduits for energy. And that sometimes awesome. negative energy, it, it, it uses people as conduits to attack things that are trying to progress beyond that negative place. And, uh, and negativity likes to keep everyone where it is because fear is the energy that we are being fed on. Mm. You know, fear is what keeps us on this three-dimensional wavelength. Fear, anger, all these things... That they all come from one sort of energy, you know? And when someone's trying to free themselves from that and uncondition themselves from the belief of accepting that as mm. what we are, like mm. the world's awful, yeah? yeah, it is because it's hell. Yeah, don't come to hell and talk about getting burned. It burns here. Mm. Well, the, the way to escape is by getting out of that dimension spiritually to the right frequency and recreating hell and making heaven on earth. Because heaven, we can have heaven right now. You know, we don't need to die to have heaven, but we need to die every moment to have our true selves. 